Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. We have a great show for you tonight. Mr. Jim Dawson is standing by in the wings ready to play some music for us. We uh, have Mr. Casper Leach right here, ready to co-host the show. Right behind my shoulder and right there in the middle is Dan King. He's got a new drink, uh, the Cannabis Energy Drink. Cannabis Energy Drink. We're going to talk more about that. We have some other nifty things to talk about. A lot of new legislation and a number of stories in our hemp news segment tonight. So stay tuned as we bring on our infamous Dancing Cannabis Leaves. I feel the force. Our first story is out of the great state of Vermont. Legislation adopted this year to remove criminal penalties for marijuana possession will go into effect on Monday. Vermont's the 17th state in the nation to decriminalize or legalize marijuana possession. According to Matt Simpson, a legislative analyst for the Marijuana Policy Project, he said, quote, this is a much needed step forward toward a more sensible marijuana policy. Nobody should be subjected to life-altering criminal penalties simply for possessing a substance that is objectively less harmful than alcohol, end quote. The uh, bill, House Bill H-200, introduced by new uh, Vermont legislator Representative Christopher Pearson of Burlington, Vermont, uh, who's with a tri tripartisan group of 38 co-sponsors, removes criminal penalties for possession of up to one ounce of marijuana and replaces them with a civil fine similar to a traffic ticket. Those under the age of 21 will be required to undergo substance abuse screening. Vermont State Attorney General William Sorrell and Public Safety Commissioner Keith Flynn testified in support of the measure, which was signed into law by Vermont Governor Peter Schulman on June 6. According to uh, Simon, he said, quote, there's still work to be done and supports growing for a more comprehensive marijuana policy reform. Till marijuana is regulated and taxed similarly to alcohol, Sales will remain uncontrolled and profits will benefit uh, illegal actors instead of legitimate tax-paying businesses, end quote. Our next story is out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Attendees at the 81st Annual United States Conference of Mayors voted this week in favor of a resolution urging the federal government to stop interfering in the affairs of states that have legalized the use of cannabis. The mayors from some 200 U.S. cities nationwide participated in this vote. The measure resolves, quote, states and localities should be able to choose uh, whatever, set whatever marijuana policies work best to improve the public safety and health of their communities, and calls for amending the Federal Controlled Substances Act to explicitly allow states to set their own marijuana policies without federal interference. It further calls on President Obama's administration to re-examine the priorities of federal agencies to prevent the expenditure of resources on actions that undermine the duly enacted marijuana laws of the states. Mayors Bob Filner from San Diego, California, Mike McGuinn of Seattle, Gene Kwan of Oakland, California, Steve Hogan of Aurora, Colorado, Marilyn Strickland of Tacoma, Washington, Tom Bates from Berkeley, California, Stephen Casty of San Leandro, California, and Matthew Bingham of, uh, or Matthew Ryan of Binghamton, New York, submitted the resolution, which was approved unanimously by the U.S. Conference of Mayors. They had previously adopted a resolution at their 75th annual meeting, declaring the war on drugs a failure and calling for a health-centered reorientation of drug policy that provides cities, counties, and states the flexibility they need to find the most effective way to deal with drug control. From Honolulu, Hawaii, Democratic Governor Neil Abercrombie this week signed two separate measures into law to amend Hawaii's 13-year-old medical marijuana program. 
Hawaii House Bill 668 transfers the administration of the state's medicinal cannabis program from the Department of Public Safety to the Department of Public Health. Senate Bill 642 increases the, med the quantity of medical cannabis that may be possessed by patients from three ounces to four ounces. The measure also increases the total number of mature plants that may be legally grown by qualified patients at any one time from three to seven. Some 11,000 Hawaiians are registered in the state's medical marijuana program. The changes in law become effective in January 2015. Out of Concord, New Hampshire, members of the New Hampshire House and Senate on Wednesday gave final approval to a revised version of New Hampshire's House Bill 573, which establishes a regulated system of medical cannabis distribution in New Hampshire. The amended bill, which passed uh, by 284 to 66, creates four state-sanctioned marijuana dispensing facilities to produce and distribute cannabis to state-qualified patients who possess a physician's recommendation. Patients diagnosed with one of approximately 20 qualifying conditions, including cancer, hepatitis C, muscular dystrophy, Crohn's disease, multiple sclerosis, would be permitted to legally possess up to two ounces of cannabis. Under the proposed law, patients must obtain the cannabis only from a state licensed facility. Qualified patients will not be provided with any legal protections to possess or use cannabis prior to the establishment of such facilities. As originally passed by the New Hampshire House, the measure allowed qualified patients the option to grow their own cannabis. The measure also allowed physicians to recommend cannabis for the treatment of post-traumatic stress. Both provisions were stripped from the bill by the Senate at the request of Democratic Governor Maggie Hassan. New Hampshire Governor Hassan has publicly stated that she will sign the reconciled version of House Bill 573 into law. New Hampshire will become the 19th state to allow for the limited legal use of medical cannabis, along with, quite ironically, the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C. Our next story is from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. A bill that would legalize marijuana in Pennsylvania got the support of the NAACP on Tuesday. Reintroduced in February, by Pennsylvania State Senator Dalen Leach. The bill would allow the use, regulation, and taxation of cannabis in the Keystone State. But as long as the Republicans control both houses of Pennsylvania's legislature, few expect the bill to pass or probably even get a hearing. And even if the bill somehow made it through the GOP-dominated legislature, it's likely that uh, Pennsylvania Republican Governor Tom Corbett wouldn't sign it. But the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People endorsed the measure saying the war on drugs unfairly focuses on minorities with a staggeringly disproportionate arrest rate compared with white users. According to uh, David Scott, the chairman of the NAACP's Legal Redress Committee, he said, quote, the war on drugs is a catastrophic failure, end quote. Scott pointed to a report recently released by the ACLU our American Civil Liberties Union, which clearly highlights the racial bias in the war on drugs. Senator Leach said he was thrilled to have the support of the NAACP. He called the legalization of marijuana in Pennsylvania inevitable. Senator Leach said, quote, this is decimating the minority community. This is a problem that is particularly acute, end quote. The New Jersey Health Department last week reported that 1,000 patients are now registered in New Jersey's medical marijuana program. The New Jersey Department reported this fact without much fanfare, likely because so far only about 130 patients can actually buy cannabis. Due to a shortage of functional dispensaries and other delays created by foot dragging on the part of Republican Governor Chris Christie, who was never that thrilled about medical marijuana to begin with, the access still just isn't there. Three and a half years after, former Governor John Corzine signed the medical marijuana bill into law. Many patients are upset, reports Jan Piffler from philly.com. In New Jersey, only patients with serious illnesses qualifying for medical marijuana, but patients with terminal cancer, AIDS, epilepsy, MS, though they qualify and have been registered, are still waiting. One patient, a uh, former New Jersey corrections officer, has sued the state for the delays, saying he's suffering while the state wrangles over strict rules that have led so far to the opening of only one dispensary. That one sells only to New North New Jersey patients and has said it's overwhelmed by the demand. Our next story is out of Morgantown, West Virginia. 
THC or tetrahydrocannabinol possesses gastroprotective qualities and could potentially reduce incidences of NSAID or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAID, induced hospitalization according to preclinical data published online in the European Journal of Pharmacology. Investigators at West Virginia University assessed the impact of THC administration in an animal model of NSAID-induced gastric inflammation. They reported that low doses of THC provided gastroprotective effects, such as attenuating gastric hemorrhages and lesions and reducing ulcers. The researchers concluded, quote, the results of the present study suggest that Delta-9 THC may also possess gastroprotective effects in NSAID using patients, as current antacid regimens may be associated with undesirable effects. Other approaches to prevent NSAID-induced gastric ulcers are needed. In addition to their gastroprotective effects, cannabinoids produce other beneficial effects, including pain reduction. Thus, cannabinoids bene uh, may have the added benefit of reducing the effective analgesic dose of NSAIDs as well as reducing the incidence of NSAID-induced gastric ulcers." End quote. NSAIDs, such as ibuprofen, are among the most widely used analgesic substances in the world, but their consumption is associated with various adverse and life-threatening side effects, such as heart attack, stroke, and internal bleeding. According to a 2001 study conducted by the University of Illinois College of Medicine in the United States, gastrointestinal complications induced by non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, cause more than 100,000 hospitalizations here in the United States each year and an estimated 16,500 deaths annually in the United States. The study, Acute Delta-9 Tetrahydrocannabinol Blocks Gastric Hemorrhages Induced by the Non-Steroidal Anti-Inflammatory Drug Diclofenac Sodium in Mice, appears online in the European Journal of Pharmacology. Dallas Cowboy defensive tackle Josh Brent has been thrown in Dallas County Jail after testing positive for marijuana, violating the terms of his $100,000 bond. Brent may have to remain in jail until September. DUI manslaughter trial begins after his bail was declared insufficient on Thursday because of the positive test for marijuana. Brent, who's 25, is charged in connection with a car crash last December in Irving, California, crash killed his best friend and teammate, Jerry Brown Jr. Brent's Mercedes S600 struck a curb, overturned, and caught fire, reports Brian McIntyre at Yahoo Sports. Brent, who was driving, reportedly had a blood content, uh, uh, alcohol content level of 0 0.18, more than twice the legal limit of 0 0.08. A July 19th hearing has already been scheduled to determine whether Brent's bail should be declared insufficient after a May urine test found marijuana in his system. The test was given on the same day State District Judge Robert Burns III had denied an earlier request by the prosecutors to revoke Brent's bail because they had alleged he'd been drinking alcohol, another violation of his bail terms. But after a June 19th urinalysis indicated the presence of marijuana in his system, the prosecutors filed a motion this week asking Judge Burns to declare Brent's bail insufficient before the July hearing. The prosecutors claim the level of cannabis found in Brent's system indicates a pattern of successive use. The court ordered scram ankle bracelet Brent was wearing had also failed to log data on 22 occasions, prosecutors claim. According to the prosecutors, they said, quote, the defendant in this trial has been repeatedly warned of the conditions of pretrial release in this case, uh, and his continued use of marijuana demonstrates a pattern of conduct in disregard of the court's authority properly supervise his pretrial release. Texas Judge Burns agreed declaring Brent's bail insufficient for good cause and he was rearrested. He'll likely have to remain in jail until his July 19th hearing when Judge Burns will decide whether to hold him. And uh, we have one last story here tonight. Michael Hyde, the father of uh, the child medical marijuana patient Cashy Hyde, who died of a brain cancer tumor last year has filed to run for mayor of Missoula, Montana. Hyde, who's 29, filed on Thursday, the last day to file for such city races in Missoula. He's continued working as a medicinal cannabis activist through fundraising efforts with the Cash Hyde Foundation since the death of his son. Hyde's taking on a popular incumbent, Mayor John Ingren,
who ran unopposed in 2009, is now seeking a third time in office. Hyde says, quote, yeah, I'm an underdog, but I love the story of the underdog, end quote. Hyde last November objected to the way law enforcement responded to the death of his terminally ill four-year-old son, Cash, according to a story in the Missoulin. Uh, the father's call to a social worker triggered the arrival of law enforcement. Hyde asked the officers to leave while the family mourned, but the police stayed to follow protocol. Five uniformed law enforcement officers shut down my whole house and treated it like a murder scene, and I asked them to kindly leave on several occasions and come back in the morning, Hyde said last November, and they told us no. The family had chosen a course of treatment for Cash Hyde's brain cancer that involved a regimen of Rick Simpson oil a highly concentrated form of hash oil used by many cancer patients to battle tumors. We're proud at THCF to say we, were, we helped Cash Hyde uh, obtain his medical marijuana permit in the state of Montana and in the state of Washington, as we've helped dozens of other young children fighting cancer, probably over 20 in the past two months. Anyway, that's the end of our hemp news segment tonight. We're gonna jump over and uh, have a little musical interlude. You ready, Jim? This is Jim Dawson. All, All right. right. Jim Dawson. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Jim will be back at the close of the show with another song at X. And I'd like to welcome you, Dan King. Thank you. King. Dan King. Welcome to the show. Casper Leach. Thank you. It's an honor to be here again on Friday. Yes, and, indeed. Uh, we have a little. Looks like we're sending out a smoke signal to our Native we are, American. We actually friends. have right here burning a hemp oil lamp. It's a, a piece of hemp twine with a little thing of hemp oil made from hemp seed oil. So this is hemp energy right here on our stage. We'll be talking a bit more about it in our uh, show and tell segment. But Dan, you are the uh, one of the purveyors of this new cannabis energy drink. Yes, sir. What can you tell us about your new hemp energy beverage? Well, it is one of the hottest selling energy drinks to actually hit the market, uh, especially here in the United States. It was debuted January 23rd in uh, Colorado, Denver, Colorado. Uh -huh. Whereas our headquarters that is located right now, uh -huh. and uh, I've never seen anything like this in any store. Uh, uh -huh. I remember back in the uh, late '80s and early '90s in Switzerland, there were a number of cannabis drinks that spread across Europe and were very popular there. And I, I like their the hemp tea mix that they have in Switzerland, but I haven't seen any U.S. company trying to do this. Now this says it is distributed out of Wilmington, Delaware. Right. So what's the connection between Delaware and your headquarters in Colorado? I believe they ship it to them. They mix it out and distribute it out to us uh -huh. in each individual state. So do you use Canadian hemp seed oil? 
I don't know. That's a good question. It probably is. <laughs> I mean, for instance, what we're burning right here is Canadian hemp seed oil. Of course, when you go to the Swiss purveyors and the purveyors in Europe, they're using uh, European-based uh, hemp seed oil. Ah. Now, there have been uh, a number of reports that energy drinks uh, with the caffeine in them can be uh, not so healthy. Dr. Oz came out and said that one or two of these a week can actually be uh, a problem for people who have high blood pressure and problems with heart, heart attacks. Is this true with the cannabis drink? Uh, that's most accurate with all energy drinks. Uh, it is an energy drink, but because of the hemp seed extract that is in it, it has a little benefit uh, more comparable than our competitors. Uh -huh. It does have some caffeine. It's, it's got more hemp seed extract. If you take the, uh, the, the ingredient list as anything. Do you know what these other ingredients are here, Dan? Uh, relatively. <laughs> okay, is there anything you can tell us about them? Uh, there you've got sucrose, glucose, and there's uh, glorana lactone. Do you know what that is? Right, I should have done my homework a little bit better. I apologize. Uh -huh. um, I do know that they are not all synthetic ingredients, but they... Uh -huh. What does it taste like? I haven't tried one. Really sweet, crisp, and uh -huh. real great taste, aftertaste, and a great body feel. Really natural, uh -huh. really energized, really, and... I'm not one to drink many of these energy drinks. I've, I've maybe tried... I don't think I've ever tried uh, many of them. So are you like a distributor for Oregon only, or do you handle the United States? Are you the global distributor, or...? As of right now, I am a distributor and sales rep for Oregon. Uh -huh. And uh, we're based out of Junction City, just outside of Eugene, and uh -huh. just starting to open up the territory here in Oregon and explode. Cool. All right. Cool. Well, we are taking phone calls tonight. If you're out there and you have a question about ending adult marijuana prohibition, restoring industrial hemp, or helping medical marijuana patients, then you can call that number there on your screen. It's 503-288-4442. That's 503-288-4442. Is that bugging you, Gasper? You're looking uh, like that's bugging you. It's just interesting. It's just, okay. never seen this much smoke in a room that didn't have people token on it. Okay, okay. Well, we'll try not to offend you Thank too you. much. We'll Thank you. Move it over here. Oh, better, better. That's better for you. Better. Less frightening. Okay. All right. It is kind of blowing in your direction. Thank you. No. So, again, if you have a question or comment for us tonight, call us at 503-288-4442. So, Casper, how has your week been going? Excellent. I completed my class uh, that I've been taking at Reed to help you improve your memory. Uh -huh. And graduation. So you taking a class at Reed? I, well, I was, but I couldn't exactly remember where the classroom was at. Uh-huh. I can see why you needed it then. Did Maybe next semester I'll get there. I know you just live right across the field from Reed. Yeah, well, it took me a minute to even find the building. Uh huh. Okay. You give me very it's expensive. Good you give me good medication. It's expensive to go to Reed. <laughs> it's a very expensive. Steve Jobs school. went to Reed. He did. So that says it right yeah. there, doesn't it? I'm also excited about the fact that uh, there's legislation going on in different states now here in America that is moving marijuana, medical marijuana, forward. And it looks like, as uh, the judge said yesterday, Judge uh, James Gray said on the program, the end of prohibition is in sight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, I think that's right. I think that, it's, you know, here in Oregon, we've seen the House pass uh, the uh, bill to allow medical dispensaries to be right. set up and licensed. House Bill 3640 it passed by 31 to 27 last week. Looks likely uh, that uh, that'll pass in the Senate, get to the governor's desk. There have been several bills, including we've added post-traumatic stress to the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program. That goes into effect come January 1st. We've seen a reduction in the penalties for marijuana across the board. So we've really seen probably the most progressive legislative session for marijuana law reform uh, ever here in the state of Oregon, while at the same time, as you people who heard the news at the top of the show, it's happening all over the United States from uh, New Hampshire and Vermont to uh, almost out in Hawaii and uh, down in the south. So we're That was another question I had. I know that we got a friend named Roger Christie who is sitting behind bars indefinitely and they arrested him in Hawaii. Uh, right. Marijuana charge yet for 13 years we've had medical marijuana available to patients what what here is a man preaching peace and using it as a sacrament and being a very non-violent caring loving man even giving 
to the community, feeding the poor, giving clothes to the people who performing need marriages. Exactly. Uh, the day before children. he was arrested in July of 2010, he performed a marriage, and, uh, and uh, now he's been held for over three years without bail. And, they and got, his trials is currently set in August. I mean, no, in October, and they just set it back from again? July to October. Good Lord. And, and they got medical his, marijuana available. How, how, do they, how does the state balance that it's out? It's all about money, power, and the continued centralization of economic and yeah. political control. You know, we are uh, uh, taking phone calls tonight, and we think we have our first caller. Welcome to the show, caller. Hey, how's it going tonight, boys? Very well. How are you? Very good, very good. I'm calling from uh, Vancouver area, British Columbia here. Right. I've got a good question for you here, gentlemen. All Here's right. my dilemma. How is it they're going to do this in Canada, what they're just done in the States? They're setting it up so that we have national dispensaries and that the government is going to be profiting from the dispensary of, and uh, usage of, uh, and the pain of patients uh, and making an industry out of it. Uh, you know, it's just like the chemotherapy gig. But anyways, let's get down to the point. The point is, is that we, uh, how can we possibly believe that these guys are not going to be using chemicals and fertilizers and these types of things that are going to make it so that, uh, you know, we're not actually getting a healthy product? Um, I refuse to use dispensaries anymore because I've uh, got weed. You know, from we've got to have the right to grow our own. That's one thing. Absolutely. And then we have to demand truth in labeling, you know. We don't really know what are in tobacco cigarettes. We can never let that happen to the cannabis market. In our proposal, in fact, just today, we turned in 2,500 signatures in or the Salem, Oregon uh, Secretary of State's office on two different initiatives, 2,500 each, to legalize marijuana. One is a constitutional amendment that says anybody can possess, use, and grow marijuana, though the state can regulate the sale. And the other one says that the uh, it regulates it much like Measure 80s did the last time with a few changes to address uh, uh, the law. So we have a proposal in Oregon that will allow people to grow their own without a license fee or registration and demands that any additive that the product be tested for pesticides, mold, and any additives be listed on the label. May I make a comment? And this is one of the reasons why I uh, seldom enjoy or partake of uh, any type of medible or edible in the marijuana movement. There are a lot of people who offer me edible and medible uh, marijuana products, but I'm not sure how they were made, what factory they came out of, what the conditions of the environment was that they were produced in. Now, an item like this I have no problem with because you can tell it was made in a environment that was inspected and cared for, but there's a lot of chances that you could be facing, uh, as Paul said, you know, a surprise that you might not appreciate in, your, in what you're getting ready to digest. So. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons why uh, this um, market needs to be regulated, and a lot of people don't like that expression, but if we have a regulated market like we do with anything else that we uh, p uh, promote, whether it be tomatoes, uh, you know, for ketchup, or uh, shoestrings, uh, there's always uh, some sort of standard that must be applied to that product so that the consumer makes the purchase, they know it's safe, and it is exactly what it says on the label. That's a brilliant evaluation. I actually absolutely have to agree with you on that. Um, you know, it, creating a standardization so that we know that the benefits that a person is getting is consistent. We know that there's not going to be a health issue or contamination issue. And um, in that statement, um, for my own personal use, I have a 105 plant license. Uh, I'm allowed 30 grams. Now, in that, um, rather than going to a large operation like a lot of other people do and trying to make a living off of it and, you know, and supporting the rest of the industry, I decided I was going to you know, make sure I had my crap together first and, and really do this properly. Right? So what I did is I uh, met a gentleman out in Vancouver Island. Uh, his name is Ted Marshallton. He was an interesting fellow. He was walking around with a water bottle on his head. Anyway, so I digress. Um, uh, he has his company, and he has these rotary gardens. And I was talking to him about it, and he says, you know, well, why don't you give one a shot, you know, and if you don't like it after six months, you can give me your money. I'll give you your money back. And I went, okay, fine. So I, I brought the thing home, and I set up. But I took it a little step further. I actually made an insulated environment, um, and it's completely self-contained system, pure air going in, pure water going in, everything that you could possibly want. It, it, beyond scientific level as far, at this point, uh, a lot of people are really quite amazed when they come in and look at this. But... What I get out of it is, you know, a really, really good medicinal quality uh, marijuana. What this does for me for pain application, I've got arthritis in my spine. Um, I'm, you know, 
was deteriorating. Now my life is coming back. I've got mobility again. I'm strong as an ox. I'm 46 years old, and I can keep up with the young guys again. I'm pretty impressed with the lividity of my life. Um, you know, and I and I got to thank this guy for it. He really, really helped me along to understand the process, and what I was doing wrong, what I was looking at. And, uh, you know, now I've got this state-of-the-art system, you know, and uh, my overhead is, you know, nil. I'm using two bulbs, uh, you know, uh, three and a half gallons of water, four gallons a week. And uh, it's, it's amazing. No power usage. Uh, you know, I don't have to worry about people being able to, you know, uh, notice my equipment or system or, you know, figure out what it is I'm doing. It's totally self-contained. It looks like a closet. It's beautiful. Well, see, one of the things, all that you mentioned is one of the reasons why places like Eli Lilly and Johnson & Johnson are not at all happy with the idea of having this plan available for people to utilize because as you said for a very small amount of money you're able to produce your own medication to take care of your needs adequately and that's the way it should be that's the way we yeah. need to make it we need to give power back to the people over well, the past hundred years power has been seized by corporations government these artificial individuals we need to return power to the people and that's what we're trying to do through the initiative process in the state of Oregon that we're working on. Now you can find out more about our work by going to that website there, crrh.org. Find out more about the regulatory model I was telling you about, you can go to cannabistaxact.org. That's cannabistaxact.org. It says specifically that all, uh, the, that it has to be, that the cannabis has to be tested and any adulterants or pesticides or mold or mildew has to be listed on the package along with the date of harvest and other information. Uh, then our amendment will allow us to, to grow our own. Uh, What's Casper? I got one more thing too. And on Tuesdays we have Canadian Day on radio show Time for Hemp on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Uh, check cool. it check it out. We have a lot of people uh, you might be interested in listening to who talk about the very same issues that you brought to the table this evening. So it's on AmericanFreedomRadio.com, 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard. And every Tuesday we have Kelly Christie from KDK Distributors. We have a lot of people on like Jody Emery and Marco Renda and uh, people from uh, the LEAP organizations up there in Canada. So do make it a point to tune in. Excellent, excellent. And I'd just like to say thank you very much to Ted Marshallton at OmegaGarden.com. The gentleman really saved my life. He put me on track. He got me straight. And uh, I'm getting healthier. I'm, I'm taking care of my own medicine now. I've got control. It, it's, you know, and I think somebody should actually take this system and put it into a standardization because I think a lot of people could benefit from this. It's amazing. But thank All you right. very much. Thank God you, bless, sir. Everybody. Thanks for calling. Evening. Thank you. Have a good one up there in beautiful British Columbia, one of my favorite places. You know, we've got a film clip we're going to run in just a minute, but I'd just like to talk one more moment about this uh, this little item here, this is hemp seed oil. This is the oil from the marijuana seed and it is burning and creating energy. This is the reason marijuana is illegal. The, the whole reason is because we don't have to burn petroleum for, for fuel. We can burn hemp seed oil and hemp seed oil, it can be the most productive source of biodiesel on earth. According to studies of feral hemp in the United States, feral hemp that's about 3% THC, St still what they call Nebraska no high. It's not enough THC even at 3% to cause people to get high, but uh, it still produces 10, 15 times more seed oil than the low THC strains that they allow to be cultivated up in Canada. The only reason marijuana is illegal was to stop hemp energy, and this is the whole reason. And as soon as we legalize it and remove the artificial barriers to hemp's full utilization as a fuel, fiber, food, and medicine, then we'll see hemp return. You know, Casper and I both worked with this fellow, the late, great Jack Herr, who wrote his first book, The Emperor Wears No Clothes, in my home right here in Portland, River City, back in 1985. We're gonna run a little video tribute to Mr. Jack Herrera. Stay tuned. Henry Ford in 1941 with Popular Mechanics magazine showing off his car made from hemp. <laughs> well, come climb the mountain with me. Come see what we can see. Come climb the mountain with me, and then we will all be free.
For some men are born to lead Some men have destiny For some men plant the seed And some men set it free Here we have 92,000 cars a day, thousands of people parking behind the FBI building, and uh, they arrested us, and they said, you have to, you cannot do this. I said, well, I'm not going to pay you a fine and go on uh, probation. So I did 15 days in prison rather than give them a $5 fine. Wow. You that's, know, we had that's to... Kind of, that's kind of like it. telling Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, you can't practice on Sunday. It was a fine line. So come climb the mountain with me. Come see what we can see. Come climb the mountain with me, and then we will all be free. Jack here and Ed Adair. Well, hi, guys. They're on, they must be on, on the hemp tour. tour. Are you on the hemp tour? One, One man the hemp tour. we yeah. must We've hear. One man's voice was clear. One man heard the call. His vision speaks for all. The number one plant for paper, fiber, and fuel from the natural cycle had been outlawed, that somehow the synthetic cycle had won, when the number one thing in the natural cycle could outproduce it and completely clean up the atmosphere. So my partner, Captain Ed, who had become my partner in 1973 in doing the politics of this, said, we have to, we have to teach everybody in the world. So we went around and told them. <laughs> yeah. But it was a slow process. So come open your eyes with me. And come see what you can see It's time for the world to know The emperor wears no clothes Come open your eyes with me It's time for you to see It's time for the world to know The emperor wears no clothes It's time for the world to know The emperor wears no clothes The emperor wears no clothes the emperor wears no clothes. The emperor wears no clothes. All right, that's Mr. Jack Hare, and he taught Casper and I a lot about hemp energy, real energy like this, burning it as a fuel, uh, and about hemp medicine. And uh, uh, we'll be happy to tell you more. If you have a question or comment about our show tonight, you can call us at 503-288-4442. That's 503-288-4442. We have another caller standing by? Nope, not at this time. So, Dan, you've got your, speaking yes, of cannabis energy in a couple of different forms, we've got this uh, energy source. The hemp seed oil is being burned here with a hemp wick. And then we have this cannabis energy drink more cannabis energy. And so this is from Austria, but you said how many countries is it being sold in? In 13 other countries. 13 other countries. You know, I had several different hemp drinks when I was in Central Europe, like I said earlier, uh, in Switzerland and Germany. I, I didn't get over to Austria, but uh, uh, they were growing hemp for, as an additive for these drinks and flavoring. And so it's, it's made in Austria, but available in Australia and now here in the United States. Yes. How can people find out more about this? Uh, you can go to our website at CannabisEnergyDrink.com. Uh -huh. And what, what kind of boost does it give you? I mean, does it just kind of give you a little lift because you got it? Have you drank much of this stuff? You got I have drank. I haven't tried it yet myself. Does it make you feel like you, you feel like taking a nap and then decide not to? Or do you, after you drink a can of it, do you want to go out and wash your car and run the dogs around the neighborhood and cook dinner? No, this puts you on the right level where your mind frame wants to be and your body can catch up and be equal together. I believe that is really great focusing energy drink. And Groovy. so that website again is? It's CannabisEnergyDrink.com. And okay. you can also check us out on Facebook. Uh huh. All thank right. You. Well, I want to thank you for coming on tonight. Now, right here, we have a, another cannabis medicine. Let's go back to this. Uh, this is an Eli Lilly. This is actually a pint bottle of... Uh, Fluid extract number 96. Fluid extract number 96. And you can, Eli Lilly out of Detroit, Michigan, had several cannabis compounds, including a powdered flower extract, basically key for powdered hashish, and uh, other tinctures and compounds. And this is a, a rather large bottle. We've had some, some smaller bottles that we've been showing the past few weeks, but this is a full pint size bottle, a good. 16 ounce bottle from Eli Lilly, very uh, valuable item actually. And we have another. Hmm? And after the show, we'll be enjoying several cannabis compounds together with the people who have attended the show this evening, right? We will indeed. Um, 
We have a caller. Welcome to the show, caller. Hey, how you doing? Very well. How are you? Hey, Paul. I just had a question for you. All righty. Hey, what was the last time you saw your penis? It's like Santa Claus. He doesn't have to see it. He just has to believe it's there. <laughs> I can see it anytime I want. <laughs> I guess uh, I could say something, but that was pretty stupid. You know, the guy got through our... Our careful call screeners out there. So, uh, uh, sorry about that, viewers. We keep trying. Well, it was nice to know that uh, there are dicks in the community that talk. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for calling in. Good point. Good point. Um, so, um, now we've got coming up here soon, we got the Portland Hemp Fest. Hemp we Stock. Do. The Hemp Stock Festival is coming up uh, on September 7th and 8th down at uh, Kelly Point Park. We're trying to get Kelly Point Park renamed to Harrow Point Park. And in fact, this Sunday on June 30th, we're going to have a volunteer potluck at Kelly Point Park, right at the picnic area, right at the point, at the convergence of the uh, Columbia and Willamette River, the two largest rivers in the West. If you're interested in getting involved as a volunteer for our Hempstock Festival, Come down to Kelly Point Park this Sunday at noon. We'll be there from noon till, oh, about 4.20, 4.30. And uh, you're welcome to get involved. Also, our organization, THCF, are proud to announce that we are, again, the presenting sponsor of the, the world's largest marijuana festival, the Seattle Hemp Fest. Nice. So we're going to have our name right across the top of the poster yeah. again. I think this is about the seventh year in a row that... Uh, we are going to be the presenting sponsor. You know, I kind of thought with marijuana being legal now in Washington, some other company would come up there and, uh, you know, offer them a lot more money. And they thought that they were going to, but apparently the bidders all backed out. And we, again, are now the sponsor. And I'm proud to say that. And thank the folks at the Seattle Hemp Fest uh, crew. If you go to their site, hempfest.org, it says, We love THCF, the Hemp and Cannabis Foundation right across the top and next friday we are going to be doing a rerun is that right because we're going to be out having a picnic and a we're party gonna, and we're going to be it's not a rerun we'll be we've got a new show that's being produced and we'll be running a, a tape show oh cool because our studio is closed next friday on july the 5th but we'll be back with another live show come uh friday july 12th so you can watch us next friday but it'll be a pre-tape show uh won't be live in the studio so right. we'll my weekend will be full. I found an old copy of the Constitution, and on the back there seems to be a treasure map that I can follow and check it out. So Good who luck. knows? It's kind of like that na those those movies out there. Uh, anyway, we have another caller. Welcome to the show, caller. Yes, hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hey, well, hi. I'm calling you from Milwaukee. Hey, all right, hey. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. No, no, Milwaukee, Milwaukee Oregon. Oregon. Okay. Not hey. far away, but that's good. Milwaukee, Oregon's cool. Yeah, big MLK between Park and River Road. Yeah. Hey, uh, my friend's watching. Kristen, darling Kristen, she's a big supporter. Will you guys wave Thank to her? Hi, darling. Wait, wait. Thank you. All right. Stay high, Kristen. <laughs> stay high, Kristen. Stay yeah, high. Stay high. She, he says stay high, and I say hi. Hey, cool, cool. And she's a big supporter. Uh, what about the, the hemp protein? Hemp it's protein, really good is for that you. made out of like the vines and uh, yeah. roots? Or? No, it's made out of the seed. Uh, after you, you see this is hemp seed oil that's burning here. Well, it's pressed from the seed. And the hemp seed produces a protein that has all nine of the amino acids that humans need for healthy uh, optimal nutrition in the perfect balance needed for human health. So this oil is from hemp seed and the hemp protein powders are made from that seed as well. And it also has all the EFAs, the essential fatty acids like omega-3, 6, and 9 that you need for human health. So in addition to all the amino acids and protein, it also has all the essential fatty acids and uh, omegas. Well, wow, that sounds good. I, I, I definitely think uh, I try There's a lot of different it. companies that are producing it. They've got uh, a brand at Trader Joe's, a brand uh, Nativa that's national, and even uh, Bob's Red Mill out there in uh, Milwaukee, I think, has some hemp 
uh, meal products that you can pick up. Milwaukee, Wisconsin? Milwaukee, Oregon. Oh, okay. Bob's Red Mill. Yeah, yeah. Hey, do you think they'll ever get a, you know, you've got to renew your card every year, I think, my friend Kristen says. Yeah, the medical years. marijuana card, sure. We're hoping we're just going to make it legal in 2015 for everybody. Right, right. But, yeah, we'll extend that, to, you know, to like three years or four years or something on the card. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But uh, I would love there. I would love to see it where you just have to get a card one time and, you know, just it'd be part of your red, regular medical regimen. When you see your doctor, uh, they can help you with that uh, without having to go to a specialist. Or you shouldn't even have to get an ID card from the state and pay that fee. And I'm hoping we'll get to that, that after we legalize it for all adults. Yeah, sounds good, yes. All right. Well, uh, yeah, I'm here. Uh, great show, a uh, good supporter again. And uh, again, a shout-out to uh, darling Kristen and uh, her little dog, uh, Isabel. All right. And everybody, Hi, Kristen. Cool. And woof, 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 Isabel. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks okay, for your call tonight. If you have a question or comment for us tonight, you can call us at that number that just popped up on your screen. It's 503-288-4442. That's 503-288-4442. Or if you or a loved one need help finding a doctor who can help you get a medical marijuana permit, then we have doctors all over the United States from out in the eastern United States, uh, 11 cities across the state of Michigan, where we are reopening here next month, then uh, out to Hawaii and, and many points in between. Call us at that toll-free number. It's 1-800-723-0188. 1-800-723-0188. If you're here in the Portland area, you can call us at 503-235-4606. That's 503-235-4606. You can also call that number if you're interested in getting involved in our campaign to end adult marijuana prohibition through our new constitutional amendment, the uh, Help in Marijuana Prohibition in Oregon, or HEMP in Oregon, and our revised version of last year's Measure 80, the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act. We're also working on a couple, uh, three other petitions, ones that say individuals have more rights than corporations, governments, and in the near future, artificial intelligence. Another one that uh, says that each person owns their own genome and that uh, DNA cannot be patented and has to be open source technology. And last but not least, one that would establish a state bank of Oregon so that uh, Oregon's tax money would go to develop economic uh, projects in the state of Oregon instead of uh, out in Timbuktu or outer Mongolia or the tar sands in central Canada. Anything you want to say real quick, you guys? Yes, oddly enough, we are going to be doing two-hour specials every Friday on American Freedom Radio on the Time for Hemp broadcast. We are putting together a global hemp summit that will span 10 hours of broadcasting, and we are inviting you to tune in and check it out. That will be the last, uh, we, the last day of each week in the Friday. month of August. So every Friday, tune in and take two hours. A time for hemp. We're going to be covering the medical marijuana aspect, and we're going to be covering industrial hemp. We're going to be having a global powwow about the uh, laws and what it takes to end prohibition. Then we're going to also be offering solutions, and we'll be having experts on from England, Australia, Canada, Germany, and all points around the world. So do tune in, and also don't forget that every Monday through Friday on AmericanFreedomRadio.com, you can listen to Time for Hemp. 10 to 11 a.m. and be sure to tell your friends and check us out in iTunes and you we, can download those for free. We have a little film clip we're going to run right now. This is Jorge Cervantes talking about cultivating cannabis and about soils and containers. So we'll be back in just a moment. Growing in inexpensive, readily available containers allows each plant to be cared for individually, including the water and nutrient regimen. Weak, sick, and problem plants are easy to cull from the garden. What this does is it gives you the ability to put the plants where you want them. And if they're planted in the ground, you don't have that ability. Container preference is often a matter of convenience, 
cost and availability. The rule of thumb is to have approximately one gallon of container for each month that the plant's alive. Now this pot is a three gallon container. Okay, so what this means is this plant can grow in here easily for another couple of months, no problem. The reason these containers are normally black is so that the roots inside the container receive no light. This is very important. Roots cannot have light. Growers prefer pots that are taller than they are wide because they allow the cannabis root system to penetrate deeply. One of the first things we need to consider when we look at containers are the drainage holes. Drainage holes are incredibly important and we have to have an adequate amount. Containers should have at least two half inch holes per square foot of bottom. What we need to do is continually pour more water and nutrients on the top and let it drain out the bottom. The container should also have a saucer underneath to contain some of the runoff water. Now if the water stays in the bottom, it'll rot the roots. It's that simple. Notice also that the plants are put in here about as tight as you can get them because they really do not need much space when they're small. Huddle small containerized plants tightly together under the brightest area below the HID lamp and move them further apart as they grow. In general, each 40 inch square space will hold from 16 to 32 plants. Now let's look at growing mediums. There's two basic kinds of growing mediums. First is a soilless mix. This is a medium that does not have any elements in it that will react with the plant. So you can fertilize it and that's it. You have complete control. This is what hydroponic gardens use. Soilless mixes are inexpensive, lightweight, and sterile growing mediums. You've got rock wool, which is spun rock fiber. You've got coconut husks that have been cleaned up and pressed together. And then you've got something like this, which is a mix of, of several components, mainly perlite and peat moss. Texture of soilless mixes should be coarse, light, and spongy to allow drainage and sufficient moisture and air retention. The next type is an organic medium. Many people prefer organic soil. I like organic soil real well, but I have to be careful with it just like you should. So if you're a new grower, first time grower, I would suggest that you try a simple soilless mix that holds water evenly and drains well. The pH scale from 1 to 14 measures acid to alkaline balance. 1 is most acidic, 7 is neutral, and 14 most alkaline. Cannabis flourishes when the pH is between 6.5 and 7. Hydroponic solutions perform best in a slightly lower pH range, from 5.8 to 6.8. Measure the pH with a soil test kit, litmus paper, or electronic pH tester. Accurate measurement and control is essential to a strong, healthy garden. Okay, we'd like to thank uh, Portland's own Jorge Cervantes. You can see his book out there, Marijuana Horticulture. I learned a lot from it when it first came out in the mid-1980s. And uh, he has a website out there. It's MarijuanaGrowing.com. He's there to answer your questions, lots of videos. Check out MarijuanaGrowing.com. As much as you promote him, you should have him on the show as a guest. We have had him on the show as a guest. Well, Jorge, a come on back. We'd like to see you. He went and moved to Spain for a while. He moved to Spain. Uh, he's, he's back in, in California. Well, he's I've originally from here in the Spain. Portland area. In fact, he used to have a uh, uh, horticulture store out at 100th and Southeast Foster, but he closed it uh, when the federal government started Operation Green Merchant back in 1989, I wow. believe it was. Cool. Anyway, uh, we are just about out of time. I want to remind our viewers out there that uh, uh, you can help us in marijuana prohibition. We're hard at work on that and expanding natural individual rights. You can go to our web portal at hemp Dot org. That's H-E-M-P dot O-R-G. And we will not be doing a live show next week on the 5th of July, but we will have a tape show. Be happy to watch. And we'll be back with another live show on July 12th. And you can come down to our studio audience here at uh, 2766 Northeast Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard uh, and, uh, and be part of the studio audience next July 12th or any Friday thereafter. Again, right here, hemp energy. That's the whole reason that marijuana was made illegal. And uh, we are fighting hard to make hemp energy again a 
viable option. And you've got this Cannabis Energy Drink. Yes, sir. You can, what's the website of that again, Dan? CannabisEnergyDrink.com. All right. Thank you for coming on, Dan. Thank you for having Dan me, Dan King with CannabisEnergyDrink.com. Thank you, Casper, with Time for Hemp. Absolutely. You can check us out at hemp.org. And here's Mr. Jim Dawson. I want to thank you folks for watching. We're going to go out another great tune by Fancy Picking of Jim Dawson. And check us out at hemp.org and help us restore hemp. Huh.